Whenever he's asked how he approaches investing, Warren Buffett returns to the same concept again and again. Partner named Mr. Market. Mr. Market. We have a partner named Mr. Market. It's your first week as an investor, and it's been your dream. Every morning, you get to walk through those New York City doors onto the floor and take part in that crazy, beautiful dance of numbers and trades. It's just like you imagined from the movies. Glorious chaos. As you find your desk, one peculiar looking figure catches your eye. He's louder than the rest, and he seems manic. I can't deal with these numbers. We're doomed. It's a sinking ship. Hey, kid. Huh? You should cut your losses. Get a decent price before your shares are worthless. Uh... Well, are you listening to me? What do you say? Overwhelmed by his manic energy, you thank him for his advice and nervously say you'll think about it. The next day, you return with your answer and are surprised to see Mr. Market entirely euphoric. Didn't I call it? Look at those numbers. I knew it would rebound. I knew it. Hey, drinks on me tonight. Hey, kid! The time is now. I'll buy your shares of XYZ Incorporated. Best to cash out while we're at a high. What do you say? Luckily, your coworker Ben overhears Mr. Market's offer. Well, are you listening to me? What do you say? Uh, just politely ask him to leave. Come on, Ben, that's a great price. With this market rebound, he'll make a killing. Have you been day drinking again? No thanks. I'll, I'll come back tomorrow. Don't listen to what he says. I should have told you this on the first day. This guy is the personification of the stock market. Every day, he offers to buy or sell you things that has literally nothing to do with the actual value of whatever he's selling. He's an emotional drunk, he's wildly inaccurate half the time, and he's slow to catch on to what things are actually worth. In other words, in the short run, he is as fickle as a voting machine, and in the long run, as accurate as a weighing machine. Stay detached and instead focus on the intrinsic value of the company you are buying and selling. And if you're patient, you can even use Mr. Market's wildly inaccurate prices against him. Take a look for yourself. Look into the fundamentals of XYZ Incorporated. See how bad of a trade that would have been. You take Ben's advice and start to do your own research and analysis of the XYZ company. You discover that XYZ Incorporated has an economic moat that gives it a competitive advantage that they took all their expense lines and made a product around it to turn it into a revenue line and has a valuation five times the price that Mr. Market offered. Moral of the story is focus on the fundamentals and ignore Mr. Market's emotional roller coaster. I mean, look at him today. It's all going bad. Uh, I'm gonna lose so much money. Uh, what am I gonna do? Mr. Market is a fictional character first introduced by Benjamin Graham in his book, The Intelligent Investor in 1949. Graham used the character to illustrate the concept of the stock market as a moody and emotional participant, rather than a rational one, and the dangers of groupthink. Warren Buffett is called the intelligent investor, one of his favorite books, and has repeatedly cited the Mr. Market idea as one of the most important in his mindset when interacting with the stock market. Even in the face of newer technologies, theories, methods of analysis, Buffett says, in my opinion, investment success will not be produced by arcane formula, computer programs, or signals flashed by the price behavior of stocks and markets. Rather, an investor will succeed by coupling good business judgment with an ability to insulate his thoughts and behavior from the super contagious emotions that swirl around the marketplace. In my own efforts to stay insulated, I have found it highly useful to keep Ben's Mr. Market concept firmly in mind.